negative emotions shouldn't even be entering your stratosphere. You should be looking at this market thinking, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you guys for having me. Um, so listen, <laughs> I am super excited about this moment right now for each and every one of you. I'm really going to kind of step into um, just building your real estate business as an agent, um, trying to build your sales business, trying to get more listings, close more deals, what this thing really looks like. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go that direction with this through this shifting market and everything. This is guys, the, the, the greatest opportunity. If you got into the business, even in like 2013, 14, 15, if you knew if you're that experienced all the way up to brand new today, you've never went through a market shift. Like we're going through right now. This is the beginning stages right here. And if you don't go all in and take full advantage of this, if you just kind of take a step back and you know, quit, quit doing the prospecting because things aren't really working as well, or, or start to make excuses about why you're not going all in right now, you're going to really look back and completely regret this opportunity because this is what will happen. The market's going to come down and it's going to go right back up. And when it goes back up, that opportunity has gone. Okay. It's completely gone and you can't go back. It's kind of like a stock. You can't go back and buy Facebook day one. Okay. Now we're here and the stock is where it is. Same thing with the real estate market. This is like going in and honestly, this is almost like going in and buying a, a like a really incredible, you know, it's like buying EXP. Like if, what if you bought EXP day one, right? This is a similar situation right this second. And I want you guys to recognize it with everything that you have. Don't listen to the media. Don't get dragged into, you know, headlines about, you know, lower transactions and prices and this, that, and the other do not listen to that kind of stuff. This is actually the kind of things you want to happen in the market. This is what we've all been waiting on. So um, this is exactly what happened to me. Okay. When I lost everything in 2005, six, seven, I got in in 2002 and, and you know, I was out of the business from 2005 to 2008. I got back in in 2008 and I implemented at the very bottom of the market. And it's the reason why by 2014, I was selling hundred properties a year. And I sold 100 properties a year every year since um, because of the opportunity that that, two, that late 2000s shifting market presented me. Even though I had to get out of the business, I got back in before the, the, the crash was over, right? I mean, in 2008, it was still going down. It went down all the way to 2012. It was the longest. It was the most, it was, it was the longest, you know, shift and downturn that we've ever seen. We're not going to see a shift that dramatic and that takes that long. This thing's going to be a blimp in the radar. It's going to go boop and it's going to be gone. So you got to go in right now. Now, this is what I want you guys to think about. I want to introduce this to you guys. Okay. I want you to think about this. I want you to write this down. And I want, I want this to be kind of like in the forefront of your mind when you see, you know, negative headlines and stuff like that. Okay. It's a thing that I just came up with this morning when I was thinking about this talk. Okay. Market share expansion strategy. Okay. Market share expansion strategy. This is what we use when a market, when we see a, a, a big shift in the market uh, and the market retracts, we've got less transactions. And by the way, guys, like they're calling for like 5.3 million transactions this year. Okay. That is strong. Last year was 6.1 million. They're calling for 5.3 and another 5.3 the year, the year after. Now predictions are just predictions. It could be, you know, better or worse, whatever, but NAR is pretty good at, at these predictions and 5.3 million is incredible, right? We still have an incredibly strong market, but think about this for a second. As the market is coming down, okay. Um, if, if you continue to do the actions, all right, and, and I'll get into the actions. If you continue to do the actions to build your business, okay, while the market is retracting, when the market's going up and your business expands with the market, you've got, your business has to expand faster than the market's expanding to attain more market share, right? If your, your business is expanding and the market's expanding and you're basically just keeping up with the expansion of the market, you're really not acquiring any more market share than you have before. Okay. So think about it. Market share expansion strategy. Now, when the market's retracting, this is when you can get so much market share. 
Now let's talk about market share for a second, because my definition is a little different than the traditional definition. And I look at it from both angles, trust me. But for me, what's more important is not how many listings and how many closings that an agent has in, in a percentage of the entire market, let's say in your MLS over the course of a year. That's a metric I can look at. And that's a metric you can actually look at to realize that even the, the largest agents in your market, their business is a microscopic dot, dot in the entire local market uh, industry. So even, so even the top agents, right, they could actually go out and double their business and it doesn't even affect, like if, if like the number one agent in my market, I looked it up, they've got 0.65% uh, market share so far this year. They could double their business and it wouldn't even affect any of the other agents. It's, it's crazy how massively abundant and unlimited the business is. There's more than you can handle. The only reason they can't go from 0.65 to 0.4 or 1.4 is because they can't handle any more business, right? This business is predicated on how much you can handle. If you're only doing X amounts because you can't handle anymore, right? That's the cold hard facts. So then you have to get into your efficiencies and how you're operating in your systems and stuff like that. But market share for me is not that, okay? For me, my definition is the percentage of property owners in the market that you have relationships with real relationships that you've talked to that you've created that great first impression that you're remarketing to I, I like a weekly email on the same day of the week forever in which they never forget who you are right so um uh let's say somebody said something in the chat so when i think about market share i'm thinking about the percentage of property owners in my market who know who i am so let's think about market share a little differently okay and when I'm taking the actions, my actions are, can I create five new friends a day? Because when I ask a buyer or seller at the end of a closing, how they pick their real estate agent, the most common answer is going to be, I had a friend in the business. I'm sure you guys would agree. Like they, they go with people that they like, that they trust, that they, that someone has built rapport with them, that they feel like kind of has their back and they're going to call that person their friend. So <clears throat> when a market is retracting, it's hard to gain market share where the market ex market is expanding, but as the market's retracting and your business is growing or even staying the same, you're you're growing your percentage of market share. Okay, your percentage of market share is growing while the market's retracting, and then what happens? This is where the magic happens during this market share expansion strategy. It means that you don't stop when the market retracts. You go more all in to talk to more people to see what we can do to help. And at the end of the day, when the market rebounds, which has happened 100% of the time, your business explodes. Because let's say, just hypothetically, let's just throw a number out there. You know, you go from 10% to 20% market share, right? Just throwing numbers out there. Like market share for real estate agents is literally like 0, 0.00 something in their, in their local markets. Let's just say, just hypothetically, you go from like 5% to 20% during a, a market retraction well that 20 percent as the market's retracting well that's probably not even the same amount of closings that you were having the year before or even two years before but as the market rebounds that that extra work that you put in while the market was retracting your business explodes like an atomic bomb and this is exactly what happened to me i'm i'm, I'm literally sitting here i'm literally sitting here speaking from experience Okay. Cause when I got in, in 2008, I pushed, push, push. So 2008. Okay. So 2008. All right. Uh, the market was going down. It went down 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. So from eight to 2012, I was just grinding, trying to help as many people as I could buy these foreclosures. I was representing buyers buying foreclosures. And I knew in the back of my mind, if I represented the buyers buying foreclosures, a couple years later, when the market rebounds and there's no foreclosures and prices go up, those people are going to resell with me and then they're going to rebuy. They're going to refer me eight people over the next seven years. And then, boom, I'm going to be one of the top agents, the number one agent in my market. I had the whole thing planned out. I didn't know if it would work, but it did work. So I'm here to tell you this is the strategy, market share expansion strategy while the market's retracting. So can I just get a commitment from you guys, maybe in the comments or something like that, that you can visualize this thing and that you're going to go all in on your business 
during this market shift. You're not going to let the the mainstream headlines and all these different companies trying to get you to click on their their articles and their social media posts. Look at that stuff and pay attention to it. But in the back of your mind, you know that none of that stuff matters. None of that stuff matters. I'll tell you something I learned through the through the 2008, that whole thing, when I look back through it, and that's that closings continue to happen every single day by the ever-living truckloads. You, you, it's mother nature. You can't stop closings from happening. You cannot stop closings from happening. So if closings are continuing to happen, and they're gonna, we're going to have 5.3 million closings this year, which is like off the charts amazing, then why in the world would you be sitting here getting down about your business or feeling down or feeling frustrated or, you know, feeling defeated or lack, you know, you, you, you have self doubt, all those, all those negative emotions shouldn't even be entering your stratosphere. Shouldn't even be entering your stratosphere. You should be looking at this market thinking, Oh my God, thank you, Jesus, for giving me this gift. Of a, of a declining, retracting market so that I can go out there and be one of the 1% that explodes in the next 12, 18, 36, 48 months. You should be thanking the heavens above for this amazing gift that they just handed you on a silver platter because that's what this is, guys. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to preach to you here. I'm trying to help you understand that this is actually the greatest thing that could happen to you in your career. We don't know when the next, you know, massive market retraction is going to happen. Okay. It could be, you know, it took it from 2000, you know, eight to 2022. I mean, we're talking about 14 years there. We don't know when the next one's going to happen like this. It could be a decade. It could be eight years. It could be a decade and a half. You, you don't know when the next opportunity to like this is going to happen. You have no idea. Right. So if you do not go all in right now to take advantage of this, you're going to look back and say, man, look at all these agents that that went all in. You know, all the agents that went all in that I was sitting here watching, thinking, why are they still making calls? Why are they still pushing so hard? Nothing's happening in the market. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? And those agents, mind you, might not have been killing it at the time. They might not have been selling a whole lot of properties at the time. But they were on the backside, behind the scenes, behind closed doors, in a dark room, building their database, remarketing to these people, building these relationships, making sure everybody knows that they're here, who they are, what they do, and they're here to help. And when the market rebounded, boom, they blew up and become the number one agent out there. And now you're sitting there saying, man, all that hard work paid off. Why can't you be the person that puts in the hard work that blows up when this market returns? Why can't you be the one? And so that's my question today. Why can't you be the one? Why can't you be the one that steps up and, and, and goes all in during this most amazing opportunity that the real estate gods above have given you? Here's what you need to think about. Very, just a few, very simple systems that are scalable. Okay, so if you're in the stages of just building your business, you don't kind of know what to do or which direction to go in, how do you get leads, what do you do with them, all this stuff. Listen to me. Every single lead gen strategy out there, right? We, we, I went through it with my group. We brainstormed and we came up with about 35 different prospecting methods. You know, I was like, let's really grind it out and really stretch our minds here as a group. It was like 150 people, uh, agents all over the country. Let's, let's get on a Google sheet, a, a page and let's, let's, let's really tell me every single, let's not miss one. All right. Every single legion strategy on that sheet. Okay. Every single one of them. Okay. The goal of, of that legion strategy, no matter which one you pick. Okay. Is designed to create a list of people that you're going to sit down and call. If you do Facebook ads, you're, you're, you're getting people, calling them. If you're doing Zillow, getting leads, you're talking to them on the phone. If you're doing open houses, you get a list, you call them next day, follow up, see how you can help them. Circle prospecting for sale by owner expires. That goes without saying. Um, every single lead gen comes right back to calling a list of people. Whether you're following up, whether you're calling warm leads, cold leads, chilly leads, lukewarm leads. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of leads you're calling. You got to call somebody. 
You have to be on the phone. So all the agents that are out there trying to figure out how not to call people, I'm going to run a Facebook ad and then I'm going to have them get into this thing and they're going to be this automatic chat and then it's going to chat them out and then blah, 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 boom. I don't have to call them and when I talk to them, it's listen, guys, slow down for a second. If you worked just as hard on trying to figure out how <laughs> the workaround, talking to people, you'd already be there. If you'd work just as hard on just talking to people and realize that the, this whole business is predicated on talking to people, you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. And you don't want to do the exact thing that this business is predicated on. That It's not going to work, right? So what I'm saying is, is that you've got to pick out the two best lead gen opportunities that work best for you. I don't care what they are, but they better, they better accomplish one thing. They better create five new friends with property owners in your market every day. That's all you got to do. If you got two lead gen sources that creates five new friends with property owners every day, you talk to, you go deep with, find out what you can do to help them, what the real estate goals are. If they have an agent, if it's okay to stay in touch, bam, 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 right? Boom. That's done. Five new friends a day. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to have a follow-up process. Your follow-up process should look something like this. Somebody says they want to buy or sell something in the near future. Cool. The next question is, same thing you'd ask your mom if she says she wanted to buy or sell something in the near future. Why, mom? <laughs> Why are you looking to buy or sell? All right. You got to go deeper with what's going on behind the scenes. And then you create a custom game plan around what their specific situation is and you follow up accordingly. The next pillar is marketing. How do you make sure that every single person that you ever talk to never forgets who you are? I don't care what it is. Mine is a weekly email. On the same day of the week forever, I did it every Wednesday since 2007. Every Wednesday since 2007. Now that's consistency. And in 2017, I quit prospecting altogether. It was the third year that I sold 100 properties a year. It was the first year I made a million dollars. And guess what? I made a million dollars every year since as a single agent. Because of that weekly email, the database I built, and the personal brand that I built on the back of that database, on, on the back of that weekly email. Sprinkle social media on top. All that low organic reach, weird algorithm stuff. Sprinkle that on top of that real nice solid foundation of a weekly email every week on the same day of the week forever. So here's your three pillars. You got, uh, you got your prospecting. Find two things that work best for you and throw everything else away. You got your follow-up process. Write it down. You need to know step-by-step step when somebody says they might want to do something. What's next? What's next? What's next? Okay, you need to have that process down. And the third pillar is marketing and branding. How is every single person you talk to ever going to not forget who you are? Right? And I'll leave you guys with this. The reason I've sold so much property is because when I talk to a prospect, I could care less if they want to buy or sell anything or if they're going to buy or sell anything. I think too many agents are, you know, maybe they're desperate for a check or they they don't understand the, the game, but the game is people. And so write this one down, okay? Focus on the person, not the property. So when you call a for sale by owner and expired, I'm not calling laser focus on that property to see if I can list it. I'm using that property as an excuse to call that property owner and see how they're doing. See if I can create a situation where I can get a chance to know this person and see what it is they're trying to do so I can figure out what I can do to help them. Okay, guys, that's my time. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> listening. I hope this uh, I hope this market share expansion strategy, I hope it clicked, that this is the moment you guys need to go all in, and I uh, hope you take it and run with it. Ricky, <laughs> wow, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not a full-time producer anymore, but you've made me want to be one again. <laughs> that was so incredible and so powerful and there were so many points that you made and and i love that you said you know i i feel like i'm just preaching to y'all i did for a moment feel like i was in church again back in the day when i would sit there and just because you you get so passionate and you're so you're so excited about it and it's so yeah. nice to hear somebody with that type of passion and to be able to share that information and that knowledge i mean you are a you're a keeper, you know, like you're just golden <laughs> in this book here. So I love it. Um, there were two, there were a few things that you said I wanted to touch on. I'm yeah, you're the tree, right? You're the tree. <laughs> a tree. So you, you mentioned that maybe chili calls. I've never heard that. So I'm trying to understand, is that between cold and warm? 
It's nothing, when, dude. Listen, yeah. everybody's like, oh, one cold call. All right, well, let's just call it anything you want to call it. Right. Because listen, here, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. All right. How many property owners in the market do you think have looked on Zillow or some other syndicated website at, at properties in the last six months? All of what, them. All, let's just say 100%. I mean, right. Yeah. So, so instead of buying Zillow leads for a thousand bucks, 35%, a hundred dollars or whatever, why couldn't you just find that property owner for one cent? Call them up and say, hey, this is Ricky, my local real estate agent. How you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the days in the gorgeous. Listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I saw you were looking at lines of properties. I wanted to follow up with that and see if there's anything I can do to help you. You literally, now, that, now, that, now, you, now, now I've got Zillow leads for one cent, right? It's the same people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is. And look at that script that you had. It just rolled off your tongue. Like you've said that a few times, you know, I mean, that is... times. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so I do want to say um, two other things. Time over task over time, you know, so continuing to do that same thing over and over again is what's going to get you the results. Somebody may not respond. That doesn't matter. Go ahead and continue doing your time over task over time. What you do in this quarter, everyone, is going to show up next quarter. And what you do next quarter is going to show up in your first quarter of next year. So just keep with it. Stay, keep your head down. Stay busy. Don't get discouraged. Just you've got to keep doing those tasks and you're you're golden. There's nothing to get so, discouraged about. There's right? nothing to get discouraged about. Listen, your, your definition of results has to change. The definition yep. of results needs to be how many property owners can I make friends with today? Not how many listings I can get, listing appointments, closings. All that right. stuff's going to happen as a byproduct of you doing what you really need to do, which is build more relationships in the market. Real simple That's right. stuff. That's right. Well, we've, we've got to wrap this up. I, I, no! I, just, I know. I just love listening to you. Maybe they'll bring us back another time and we can do this again. I, I'm going to lock him in right now. So he said no, Lindy. That means Ricky wants to come back, right? Ricky, <laughs> you're ready to be all over this level up playlist. We got to keep going. 25 minutes is not enough with our guy, Ricky. Cruz, That's so. right. Can I, can I get a yes, Ricky? Let's build some more relationships with Anytime. this audience out here. Let's Anytime. Come, All right. I'm down. Lindy, back to you. Just had to grab it. Opportunity was there. Opportunity was there. I wasn't going to stay stuck in tree mode. All right. <laughs> tree. Back to you, Lindy. Take us out. All right. Well, you know, and I just want to remind everybody, please do not forget to register for EXPCon. If you want to win a ticket to EXPCon, if, do you want to win a ticket to EXPCon? Of course you do. Our raffle to win an EXPCon ticket ends today. All you have to do is attend our four agent leadership meetings beginning with July 22nd and ending August 12th. So if you've been doing those, then once those are completed, complete the survey at the end of the meeting with your name, email address, where automatically you will be entered into the raffle. If you attended last week and today and fill out the survey, you actually have increased your chance of winning. So, you know, be sure today that you get registered, you get signed up. Also, please make sure that you fill out today's survey and come back next week to see who has won that ticket. Woo! You guys, that was an amazing <laughs> meeting. I'm I'm sitting here like firstly taking notes and I'm laughing and like that with this whole meeting was a bit, it was an experience. So 